Sand mining is a huge issue at the moment. Lots of it's licensed, but there's a heap of illegal activity. So sand globally, second most consumed resource on earth after water. Sand is used for everything, for silica chips, glass production, coarse concrete production, you name it. So there's an insatiable appetite uh, for sand. And of course, it's got to come from somewhere. I'm Professor Julian Leyland. I'm a professor of physical geography in the School of Geography and Environmental Science at the University of Southampton. I'm interested in the sediment in rivers, the water in rivers, and how those two things combine and move around the landscape. And I work especially on big rivers, we call them mega rivers. So these huge continental scale rivers like the Mekong that you know, have such an important role in shaping the landscape. Environmentally extracting sand from the riverbed might appear to not cause too many issues. Uh, but of course, beneath the surface, an awful lot is happening. It's kind of what we do is we look beneath the surface, how it's being extracted and what it's doing to the bed of the river. And of course, what we're showing is that it's actually decreasing the bed elevation which, when it's done across a whole uh, river reach, can destabilise the riverbank. We've been talking with communities at a place called Rokokon, uh, where people have actually lost their homes. But in addition, of course, this sediment feeds floodplains, it fertilises fields, you know, for the rice production, that type of thing as well. And that's being reduced too. So we're seeing kind of knock-on impacts of this extraction in terms of real hazards for communities. It could even affect the hydrology of the river system. So the, the reversal of the flow into the Tonle Sap Lake, which is basically the protein bowl uh, of Cambodia. We're pulling all of this research together into quite a novel framework um, called a digital twin. In a very simple sense, a kind of 3D reconstruction. But we're trying to take this idea and this concept much further. We'll have that physical construct, but then within that, we'll be trying to embed the pathways of sand, so those physical pathways of sand, but also the socio-economics of the system too. This project is bringing together physical scientists, social scientists, but art practitioners too, to really try for the first time to unravel all these different hidden parts of sand as a kind of economic, but also as a cultural kind of identity around somewhere like the Mekong River, where it's such an important part of the landscape and, and of communities.